In today's video, we're going to talk about Apple Home automations. I know there's a lot of folks out there that are thinking about switching over to Apple Home or who are in the process of doing it. So I thought it'd be a great time to talk through automations. We'll talk about what all you can do with them, how to write them, and I'll show you some examples with it. So let's dive in. If you are new to Apple Home or thinking about switching over, in order to get started, you are going to need a HomeKit hub. That can be any HomePod or an Apple TV. TV, all of them except the most recent Wi-Fi version that will not serve as a hub. If you're just getting started and know nothing about an Apple Home, I did make a video on everything you need to know. I'll put that down in the description and at the end of this video. For this video, I'm going to walk through everything using my iPad, just to give you the biggest screen, but you can do this with an iPhone or even on your Mac. Now let's dive into automations. So here are some of the different automations I have. I'm actually in the process of rebuilding a bunch of stuff and clearing out devices I'm no longer using. One of the first things I want to point out, if you look at my different automations, I think labeling is important. And the way I like to label my automations is by the room and whatever action is being taken. So you can see kitchen, living room, my office, stairs. At the end, I have my travel automations, which it tells me what room and what's happening for each of those. They're currently disabled since I'm home, but when I leave town, I enable those. It gives my how say lived in look and things are good. I found labeling things this way just makes it easier for me to find things. Let's go back to the main home screen. In order to get started, you hit the plus sign and then you hit add automations. Now the first thing you need to know about are the different triggers. There is people arrive, people leave, a time of day, an accessory is controlled, or a sensor detects them. With people arriving, you have the choice when anyone arrives at your house, it can trigger this. You can have it so that when the first person arrives at the house, it triggers it. So it doesn't trigger again with anybody else. You can also pick when a specific person is at home. So for example, if I wanna write an automation, so it automatically turns off my office lights in here, I would just select when I'm home. You can also change where this happens. So instead of home, I can pick at their locations to make this automation happen. So if I wanted to create an automation when I'm leaving work, I would pick my work address instead. And your other option is time. Because if you think about it, you don't necessarily need all your lights to come on in your house in the middle of the day. But if you want them on at night, it's going to um, go, if we click the little eye, it's gonna go from sunset to sunrise and you can make adjustments, which is good to know. You can pick up to four hours before sunset or up to four hours after sunset and same with sunrise. Now with the people leave trigger, it does pretty much the same thing, just in the opposite direction. Next is time of day and you can choose sunrise, sunset. And if you choose sunset, you can pick before, you know, a couple hours before, maybe you want something to trigger. Like in my case, I have an automation so that when a couple hours before sunset, it closes my drink. Here's the example of my curtains that at sunset, it closes them a couple hours before. So the sun doesn't come blasting through the window and heating up the house. Same thing applies with sunrise, time of day, self-explanatory. With people, you can pick one of these options. When somebody's home, it'll automatically trigger. And the way it knows if somebody's home is if the phone joins the Wi-Fi in the house, it knows that person um, is at the house. When I'm at home, when nobody's at home, when I'm not at home, you got all these different options there. Next is one I really like. It's an accessory is controlled. And what this does is you can have pretty much any device trigger anything else. For example, I could have when my front light comes on, next, I could pick turn on or turn off. Again, I got my different time options or if I'm at home or I'm away or you got all those different options there. Now, let's say when I turn on this light, next, I can have it trigger any scene I have. And then I can also have it trigger any accessory I want. This is great for linking stuff together. For example, in my kitchen, I have an automation where one light switch controls another light switch. And I could group those together. So with voice or automations, they would uh, work together. But what I want is when I push that light switch, I want it to turn on another light switch. So I have an automation that does that. So it's as if it is only one switch. Here's the example 
I mentioned earlier about the kitchen switch that turns on uh, both of the light switches at the same time. And then I made an automation the other way, which is if I turn off the one switch, it automatically tells the other one to turn off. This opens up a lot of different options. You could do something like unlock the front door at night and it'll turn on whatever scene or other devices you want. What's powerful about the an accessory is controlled option is that anything can control any scene or anything else. Where with Echoes, certain devices, you might have access to the motion sensor or might be able to trigger this, but it just doesn't seem as flexible as that. Last trigger is when a sensor detects something. So with the Hue Motion sensor, uh, for example, in here, I have it so that it turns my office on whenever I walk in here. Again, when you choose to use a sensor, you have all the different options of picking your times of day. You can also pick uh, when certain people are home or away, uh, pick when it detects motion or stops detecting motion. If you are new to automations, another good feature is the suggestions. And it will uh, give you options such as when the first person arrives home, it's going to control 45 different accessories. I don't wanna turn that one on, but let's say when motion is detected in the garage. I can take this automation and I can make changes to it. And you'll find all different uh, suggestions in there and you can tweak them, add different accessories, have them trigger scenes and all of that. And and we'll talk about how to do that in a minute. Now, the actions that can be taken with automations are being able to uh, control your home pods for music, um, for audio, for volume and all that. You can trigger different scenes and you can control your different smart devices. Now let's write an automation. I'm gonna pick the people leave one. So for this one, I want it so when I leave only, and I want this to happen anytime. I want it so that when I leave home, this is gonna happen. If I hit next, uh, what I want is for my office to go off automatically. And then I can hit next. Now, if I wanted to trigger a different scene or if I wanted to trigger a different device, maybe I wanna turn off a light in another room or whatever the case may be, or change the thermostat at the same time. I can add any of those different devices in. So for example, I select the thermostat. Now when I hit next, now when you get to this screen at the top where it says when I leave home, that's where you would put the name of the automation. And I would put office dash leave home. Under that, I have my trigger and then I have my scenes and accessories. From here, if I scroll down, I can, I don't need to make any changes to the scenes. It's gonna be controlling that one. If I wanted to back up and add other things in, I could. But uh, for the thermostat, I can tap it and change it to whatever, uh, whatever level I want it at. Now, if I wanna see if this is gonna work, which you should definitely check your automations, you just hit test automations. If I'm happy with it all, I hit done. Now let's say I wanna make a change to this. If you select the automation, it's gonna take you right back to that screen. And you can see here, there's the select accessories and scenes. You'll see that after you have an automation written. So I can select accessories and scenes and change things. So for example, if I don't want this to control the thermostat, after all, I just unselect thermostat, hit done, and the automation is finished. You'll see there's just a scene and no accessories control. Done, nice and easy. Now I'm gonna share with you some of these different examples that I've already created that I'm using in my house. For example, I have the bedroom one that with this automation, one hour before sunset daily, it closes that shade down to 55%. Now, if I wanted to, instead of using an accessory, I could create a scene. Uh, I could uh, trigger any of the other scenes or accessories. Personally, I love the flexibility and being able to control anything. I can have this automation turn my vacuum on at the same time. I don't know why I'd want my shade and vacuum together. So that's an example of me using a time. Now I have a motion sensor in my garage. So when motion's detected in the garage, it turns the laundry room on. Another sensor is using a door sensor. Here are two automations that I have for my pantry that uses a door sensor. So when I open the pantry, it turns the light on to 85%. When I uh, close the pantry door, 
it takes that light off. Here's an example of an automation that's limited to a certain time of day. I don't need the light for my camera to turn on in the middle of the day, but at night it'll turn on and that nighttime is set from sunset to sunrise. Now, if anybody walks up my driveway at night between sunset and sunrise, it turns on a light to let them know, hey, we're watching you. Now, another option under automations is the enable this automation for things like my Christmas lights. I'm not gonna need those to next year. I can turn that off. And when I do that, it will show me disabled underneath it. I like writing different automations to take care of things for me that get left on in the house. Here's one that I have, 8.30 in the morning, lights off. This, what it does is it triggers a scene, which is my uh, morning lights off, which takes the kitchen lights. And actually I can hold down on that and it'll show me what's in that scene. So it takes my living room lights out, takes my kitchen lights out, and it takes my house lights out all um, within that one scene. Now, if I make any changes within that scene, say I add accessories or change things out, I don't need to change the automation. I just update the scene instead. I also added some different accessories to be controlled. If I wanna change those, you go to the select accessories and settings, pick the, uh, pick the different scenes you want or pick uh, the different devices. When it comes to a motion sensor and some other triggers that may turn lights on, you'll see there's an option for turn off. And what that'll do is you can set an amount of time or you can have it say never. So I can have this when my camera light goes off, it stays on indefinitely, but uh, I don't want that. I want it so after 10 minutes, it's going to automatically go off. If I were to do that as a routine with my echoes, I would have to put a wait step in there and then trigger another scene. I just like that it defaults to undo what you just did. What's great with all these different automations, like in my living room and my kitchen is we don't think about lights. They come on before the sun sets. And I have an automation like my morning one that turns off all the stuff that gets left on when everybody leaves the house. Another one I like to have is my living room lights out. At 11 p.m., it triggers my good night scene. If I do a long press on that good night scene, I could see what's inside there. I, it turns off my kitchen lights. It uh, turns off my living room lights. Uh, one thing I wanted to add in here, I can add my lock-in if I want. So let's just double check. I'm gonna add this so it, to be safe. And that lock, I don't want to unlock at night. I want it to lock. So I select it, choose lock. Now, anytime that scene runs, it's going to automatically lock the door. I could have also uh, done that by selecting the accessory and uh, scrolling down, select the accessory, hit done. Once I'm at this screen, select it and change it to locked. But in this case, I don't wanna have the accessory in the scene telling it to do the same thing. So again, I wanna remove that, select accessories and scenes, go down, uns go down and unselect that, hit done. Now for cameras, there, is some options so that it automatically will change its state. So in a way it's automated on how the camera behaves. What that means is if I go to any camera in my house, let's select uh, my living room. If I go under settings, there are options in here to change the recording options. What this does is it changes the state of your camera based on where you're at. So for example, when I'm at home, you can, it'll stream so I could check my camera or my wife could check the camera when any of us are at home. But when we're away, it automatically switches over to stream and allow recording. If you wanted, when you're at home, you could have the camera turn off completely. So it's not detecting motion and it's not uh, seeing any video. Or maybe you just want to use the motion sensor from the camera. You can have it so it um, will use that motion sensor, but you can't stream outside the house and the camera basically is a motion sensor only. I just have them set up for stream so I could always check in on cameras, but it's not recording us all the time, just living life. Now under the more options, you're gonna find that you can pick 
specific motion may trigger recording, or you can have any motion trigger recording. Now, the way the camera knows which mode to be in is by whether or not our phones are detected on the Wi-Fi. So as soon as we arrive home, it sees we're on the network, boom, changes automatically. I don't wanna get into all the different camera controls. We're keeping it to automations, but if you do have cameras, definitely go through and take a look at your different options. Play around. If I click accessories, this camera also has a motion sensor and it can be, it has a siren built into it. If I wanna use the sensors on them, and if I go in to write an automation, it's gonna automatically show up. Like for my camera, it shows the G3 motion there. And if I want the siren to go off when it detects motion anytime, next, I can scroll down back to living room and I will see that G3 alarm system. Now, if it detects motion when we're gone, boom, that goes off. If you're just getting started with automations, take advantage of some of those suggested ones and tweak them, add things into them, or just create simple ones like my pantry one that turns the lights on and off. For me personally, I find that Apple Home just gives me way more smart home control options than I got using my Echoes. Now, if you're already using Apple Home and automations, if you have some good ones you'd like to share, leave them in the comments. If you're enjoying this video and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to support the channel and get some exclusive stuff like the member-only Discord, exclusive videos, and a weekly live stream, think about becoming a channel member. Also, if you haven't yet, come by Saturday to check out the weekly live stream. It's great, it's a good chance for us all to talk about whatever. Thanks for watching. Bye.